Hi, Hal. This is Subramanian Jairam Subbu. Uh, today we are going to talk about more on uh, Oracle Cloud uh, OSP process. The OSP process is nothing but whenever we are doing the in-house manufacturing. So if there are few few, few uh, services we don't have enough facilities to, to perform in our in-house manufacturing center or shop floor, then we have to give it to outside third party people will do that and they will uh, send it back after completing the process is nothing but like a welding, casting, painting, uh, this type of process or testing they will do in outside uh, uh, specialized, uh, specialized uh, vendors and they will send it back once they complete. So we are going to see how Oracle will work the outside processing and we are going to see the difference between EBS and uh, cloud, how the OSP process will work, okay? and. You can see my details are here and uh, if you want to know more on the foundation courses like purchasing inventory order management you can talk with nana so he is the best trainer in the world he can explain you in detail and he'll give the best foundation on found, uh, foundation on oracle eps and uh, cloud system so i have prepared a slight uh, <clears throat> data sheet here and I plan to use the US one legal entity, US one business unit. These are the uh, vision data. And then I have created my own uh, inventory org, the inventory org like called SUB. And I plan to use the same. And this, these are the prerequisite modules you need to know before if you want to <coughs> perform the OSP process end to end in the system. The PIM module, which will help you to create items and uh, build, bill of material. And the VIP module, will help you perform the manufacturing process. And the inventory module will help you to the picking and shipping and uh, receiving the outside processing uh, transactions. And the PO will help you do that uh, purchase order creation and requisition creation process. And then uh, it will help you to create a contract if you have the specific supplier terms are agreed to get that OSP process from them. And then the uh, costing side, yes, you have to set some, uh, again, uh, the uh, accounts uh, like a VIP valuation account, VIP completion account, VIP variance account, uh, resource account. These are the accounts which you need to set because when you transform the, when you move the material from, I mean the transaction data from VIP to purchasing to create a requisition or purchase order, then automatically, normally it will take the VIP account as a charge account of the purchase order. So in that case, so you have to enable your inventory ox and then the right VIP valuation account at uh, manage mapping set at the costing side. So we're going to quickly see that process also here. So we'll start now the system. So I have created a one OSP item. There are a few data sets I created to reduce the time consuming here. So I just created a OSP item here. We are going to see how the OSP items looks like in the system. So let me go into the system. I'm using my own, this is the vision uh, uh, environment. I'm using my own username password. <clears throat> Once you log into the system, uh, go to uh, product management and the PIM. There we can, we are, we can create items and we can uh, view the items and we can edit the items. All process you can do it from here, product information management. I'm going to see this item, uh, items details, go to manage items or browse items. Either of these uh, functionality functions, you can use it. Um, this is my YSP item, S, so S21. All my items will start S21 for my naming conventions and YSP item one. So just click search and then you can see, I just added, this is, I'm using master org and this is uh, just I assigned for the uh, validation purpose, but only this is my actual org which I'm going to do, perform in the transactions. SUB is my inventory R. And just I open this item here. Once you open this item and make sure that this uh, item type is uh, outside processing item, then go to specifications. And in specifications, go to inventory. And this inventory, this is the OSP items is not inventory item because we are not tracking any inventory is not my asset. I'm not doing any things in my in-house. So everything will be transferred outside and the third party will do my servicing. And then this is the first step. And next go to purchasing. 
So once you go into the purchasing, make sure that there is a plaque called like outside processing service is S. This is the difference between EBS and cloud. EBS, we don't have any uh, plaque like this outside processing item, but uh, you define item and then you have to link that item in the resource level. Then that will be called as outside processing item. But here slightly different process in cloud. Outside processing service should be S. Then the item will be considered as an outside processing item. This is the item level set setup. So I'm canceling it. And then after that, I have defined one assembly, one FG item under that I had three components uh, for our manufacturing uh, process. Uh, I'll give this uh, assembly item here, search. And I assign to my sub inventory. I mean, I'm sorry, I assign to my inventory arc. So just click open this item. So once you click these items, again, this item is a FG item, the same as uh, apply that finish code template or attributes will be applied. And only the differences go to structures. Structure is nothing but like a bill. Uh, go to production is the name of the structure. You can define multiple names for the design, prototype or production, whatever. So this is my assembly item. Under this assembly, I have added three components. This is my bill, which I'm going to do the manufacturing today. And I record quantities are one, 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 right? So this is the item level, PIM level configuration, which you need to do. And then once, once you've done this, go back again to first VIP. Once you want to do the VIP transaction, VIP configuration, if you want, because all the VIP is basically based on your inventory org specific, because I have created my own inventory org, I have to perform few in few configuration on the website. So go here and uh, go to the offering, manufacturing and supply chain management and go down there's a little bit like uh, uh, something called like manufacturing master data once you go manufacturing master data the first setup you need to do the plant parameters this is nothing but in ebs web parameters you need to do that and make sure that you are going for your inventory arc. change your nation i'm going into my inventory arc. so just click okay and you see this is my inventory arc, sub and then I have using my existing seated calendar and my, this is my supply sub inventory and this is my completion sub inventory. This is all again the same as in EBS. There's no change on that. And go here. This is the sequence number generations. My operations in WIP when you're configuring, you are building the WIP uh, operations. I mean the routing. Uh, oh, what are the uh, incremental steps you need to do that? And go to uh, plant parameters here, here I'm giving is my work order. This is the S21 iPhone, SUB iPhone, my starting number. S21 is my initial uh, numbers and uh, SUB is my inventory arc and this are uh, running sequence numbers, right? And then here, this is the one you need to set purchase requisition trigger for OSP process. So when you want to trigger automatically the purchase requisition means my work order release, or prior operation completion. If you have example 10, 20, 30, there are three operations in my work order completion, work order execution. If I complete prior operation is nothing but if my 20 is my OSP process, if I complete 10 is my prior operation to 20, once I complete 10, automatically the system will trigger to create a purchase requisition. And if you have agreement is exist, it will create a purchase order too. So that's the operate. That's the two options you have. I set is work order release, but in EBS we have three, three of op, three options. One is a work order release, like a, at the operation start, and then the manual. If you set the manual, you have to manually go and create a purchase requisition, purchase order, and you have to link the web job number in the purchase order, purchase request distribution level. That is the EBS. But in cloud. We don't have that option. We can't able to go create manually the purchase requisition for OSP process. Okay. And then other steps are same. And this is again the maintenance management, uh, cloud maintenance management. If you want to talk more about that, uh, so we'll discuss later, uh, later sometime. There's uh, another video for this maintenance management, how it will work for this uh, forecast origin and uh, work order generation origins. Right. This is the plan parameter first setup. So cancel it, I already set for this. And then the next step is, 
I'm going to set the work order, work area, work center, and resources. So if you, there are two ways you can do that. You can set from here work areas and work centers here, or you can go into the manufacturing, <coughs> go to supply chain execution, work definition. This is the navigation you can set here, go here, and something called like a work area. You just go into work areas, you set the work areas. I'm sorry, this is the 002. I need to go for my inventory org. And just yes, you be. I set my own work area. This is my work area. Uh, go here, taskbar, work area. The work area is nothing but in the manufacturing shop floor. What is the area? There are some areas they will call as a assembly, and some area they call as a distribution. I mean the service area. Some area they will call as a completely R and D area. So that's how they can segregate the areas. Once you've done this work area, go back again. You have to define the work centers. The work centers are nothing but the set departments in EBS terminology, like assembly department. Packaging department, testing department. Here it's called like work centers. That's the difference. I mean, the terminology difference between EBS and cloud. Click done and go back again to resources. I have defined few resources like uh, technician, technicians, quality assurance technicians, and then equipment also I defined here. The same what you are doing in cloud, I mean, the EBS. If you click this uh, resource, so you can define just simply this, uh, this uh, unit of measure is ours. And then if you have the dedicated resource in your organization, you can put the resource names here, right? So this is the first level setup. Once you've done this, then I'm going to set my standard operations. Again, the standard operation functionality is same as EBS. There is no change on that. And here, the standard operations, for example, assembly, packaging, and supplier testing. Like uh, if you click that assembly, uh, standard operations, you see this operation type, there are two types. One is in-house, another one is supplier. The supplier is nothing but the outside processing. This is my first 10th operation. I'm going to do my in-house operations, assembling and doing it. After completing my assembly, I'm going for my testing, outside testing, outside processing testing. That's the reason I have selected my operation type as a supplier. Once you select the operation type as a supplier, it will, this will be a op, uh, supplier operation details are be enabled. I'm going to use, this is my item. This is my OSP item. And then this supplier supplier site is uh, optional. If you want to seamless integration, if you want to po populate the supplier supplier site, everything details in your requisition, yes, you can populate here. If you are not populating, again, the requisition may not contain the supplier supplier details. Again, it will pick it from the contract agreement if the item has any contract agreement. Otherwise, it will, it will be uh, waiting in the requisition level. Then, firstly, the buyer has to go on to the, uh, 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 it has to go and create a purchase order from the requisition. And then again, lead times you can set how many days it will take to complete this uh, processing from the third party, I mean, the supplier side, outside processing, how many days. I just put a fixed and lead variable lead time as a two days. So I think, it's a prerequisite. You already knows how the lead time calculation will work from the manufacturing side. The same as EBS. There is no change on the lead time calculation here. It's nothing but the processing lead time is nothing but a fixed plus variable, fixed plus variable into a lead time lot size something. So that's how two days have given for a testing purpose. Right. So this is my standard operations. Once you've done your standard operations. Go back again, you are going to create your work definition. The work definition terminology in cloud is nothing but the work definition cloud means the routing in EBS. This is the terminology difference. Remaining all steps are same. So I have my assembly. I have given my assembly here, S21 assembly. I'm, this is my assembly. I'll take this assembly here and I'll click search because I already defined that, right? So I have to find the name as outside processing. I just click the outside processing here. So this is the uh, diagrammatic way you can drag and drop. And then you click here. There are, you see here, 10 is my assembly, 20 is my supplier testing, 30 is my packaging. And I have assigned uh, 
components here, comp one, and this is my resource. I have two resources I put it here. And the supplier testing, there's no components, no resources, because I'm the reason is I'm sending this testing in outside, not in in-house, in-house, uh, in-house material or in-house resources. And third one is again, I used one component uh, and then one resource. And then if you want to see the supply details here, there is a, a green arrow mark here. You click this, click this green arrow mark and go to actions, go to edit. You can see the details here. If you remove the reference, you can uh, go ahead and you can uh, change the values. You can go and change the values here. Work center, or if you want to change the names or different. There are a few things you can go and change your supplier, supplier details, supplier site, everything you can go ahead and you can change that. If you remove this uh, referenced, okay? And then click, I'm, I'm not doing that, click cancel. I'm using the same what I have. So once you've done this process, you are set for the manufacturing site. All setups are ready at manufacturing site. Once the manufacturing setups are re ready, then I have to go and create my BPA, blanket purchase agreement in the purchasing site. Let me go in, create a duplicate. Let me go into the purchasing. Let me show you the difference for OSP. We have a separate, uh, I mean the uh, type, uh, order type for OSP purchase orders, OSP agreement. So just go here and go to setup and maintenance document uh, types, I think. Go to purchasing. Uh, just a little bit uh, rushing up because uh, I want to complete this video in 30 minutes or 40 minutes. So when you are getting struck, when you are practicing, please, uh, you can uh, send an email to me. I can help you on that when you get struck. So all task and go to something called like uh, document styles, manage document styles. Once you go manage document style, something called like outside processing style, you click the outside processing style. Once you click the outside processing style, you see this type should be enabled. Outside processing enable is yes. Normally, otherwise, you can't able to create any purchase order or any agreement in the normal blanket purchase agreement uh, document style or normal purchase order document style until if it is enabled S. Yes. And then you, in the down, you can give your display name outside processing purchase order, outside processing blanket purchase agreement. So this is the setup you need to do for that. Once you click cancel, go back home. Let me open the agreement which I have created for our testing. Go to the purchase agreements. I have my agreement number. Let me show you that agreement what I have created here. Go here, uh, manage agreements. And give the agreement number here. Just click search. So this is approved, it's a open status and click the agreement number here and go down, you have a line type. But again, uh, in a line type is good. So normally you may aware now in EBS, if the line type goods means normally in the distribution level that uh, VIP services button will be disabled. You can't able to link your purchase order with the VIP job. But even cloud, we don't have any line types at the OSP processing. Even you can use uh, goods also. But only thing is that whether the item is a OSP item or non OSP item will be triggered based on the item level, purchasing tab, outside processing services equal to yes. That will drive the item is OSP item or non OSP item. Okay. That's the difference. So once you click well, the same BPA process, but only thing is the difference is outside processing blanket purchase agreement because in the document style, the checkbox is enabled. Outside processing is enabled. So done. Uh, because I'm not doing any change on this year. So once you've done that, there is something called like, uh, again, the accounts, I got struck here after creating the BPA. Uh, when I released my job, my data got struck in the supply orchestration. After that, I, re I verified all the errors. I went and seen my mapping set, the costing side mapping set. I set the VIP accounts 
inventory account purchase charge account purchasing charge account everything i had in my inventory org also in that then i repushed from the supply chain orchestration process then it got processed i'm going to show you that uh, where you can uh, how to do the re, uh, resubmit from the supply orchestration without any technical help or a back end any scripts that's a, one of the best feature in cloud everything can be handled through front end so we don't need to worry about any back end access no need to write any scripts uh, uh, enable i mean disabling some flags and uh, rerunning the program no, no need anything everything is be controlled from the front end again the inventor side if you want to do shipping everything shipping parameter receiving parameter pick wave release rule shipping rule everything you have to set that's all the prerequisites because i have created my own inventory or ecb okay i set all this then now i'm going to create a new work order so i'm going to a work order cancel <clears throat> go to home there's something called like a supply chain execution work execution and make sure that you have production engineer production supervisor and the manufacturing engineer roles are assigned all roles are org specific access these are the three roles once you assign the three roles production engineer production supervisor manufacturing engineer you will get these two icons along with that maintenance management also so just click work execution which is the place where you are going to create the your transactions go task as well make sure that you are in your inventory or suv i am in my inventory or Press on and just go for manage work orders. So manage work orders. Go and click the plus icon, and I'm giving my item, uh, my assembly item, which I'm going to create the work job. And uh, what is my transaction quantity? I'll go for a one quantity. Ah, uh, seven edit. Yeah, this is the work order. This is my work order number. One zero zero two because I already tested a couple of orders uh, for the flow whether it's working or not because the new inventory arc and then it will be unrelated to the same as uh, your EBS and then go back again you can see the work definition and work structure details completion information everything completion information what are the subunits you are going to complete where you want to put your material from them so that's the complete this all completely VIP so if people are interested we can see all the VIP transaction uh, in detail how to create a work order how to create a work definitions everything and go to operations there are three operations in the my routing i have created assembly supply testing and package and you can see here 0000, 00. these are the resources and this count point all enabled right and you can see the history here if you and the remaining all history will be shown here inspection history transaction history iot inside everything if you have iot is enabled it will show you that iot details also and this is my you know, supply testing right so if you go here you can see all if there is no outside processing it will show only for midpoint scheduling because it's a midpoint schedule is nothing but if you are changing your completion date or start date of the uh, manufacturing then again you can go for a midpoint scheduling it's nothing but backward frontward scheduling backward and forward scheduling the same as in ebs if it's a osp enable you have to show supplier operation details and midpoint scheduling supplier operation it will click that you can see my work order is 1 po requested is 0 because as per my uh, whip uh, plan parameter setup the requisition will get triggered purchase order will get triggered when i create when i release my web job right now my job is in unreleased status once i release it will show as a po requested as a one right and then if you created a purchase order details will show here you have shipping details and receiving details show in the dot we'll see one by one process okay go done so i'm going to my job uh, general information i'm making the status as a release just released just click save and save and close right and uh, these are the two jobs so i'll show all the jobs here and click search i have created three jobs uh, 1001 1001 is all my old jobs one is i completed one is in release status this is my the job which i used created right now right 
So I am taking this part number, S21 assembly item, and then click this job, which we created now, and go to operations, and uh, go to supplier information, supplier operation details. You can see PO requested is one it's showing. So if you want to see the more details about this process, go to supply orchestration. It means nothing but the interface between the across modules. I'm pushing my details from manufacturing to purchasing module. So I'll go to the supply orchestration process, supply chain execution. There's something called like a supply orchestration, right? So I click the supply orchestration. There's something called like you can see on track is three. Already I have done two, this is my third. If you have any errors, it will show you here. Then if you click that, it will open. If you click this track, you can do that here or go to task carousel, you manage supply lines. If you go for manage supply lines, it will show all the details, not only these orders. So I'll just give my item. Go to items, search. I'm sorry, S21. Uh, I need to give my OSP item. Yeah, I go advance, go start with search, and I'll go for my OSP item. Right, search. So you can see these are the lines which got created. Uh, uh, there's something called like, uh, right? Work order number is my 1002 is my number, work order number. This is my one which I created now, and this is the one, right? Open that and uh, click the cursor here, keep the cursor here, and uh, go to buy. You see, this is my purchase requisition. Right, so I created my contract agreement. That's the reason automatically system created as a purchase order. So that process you already know. So I think if you want to know how touchless buying like a purchase requisition, it will create a purchase order. The details, Nana is already has some uh, excellent documents. You can talk with him and you can provide the documents and how it will work. Again, you, you, can, you contact Nana so we have all the documents of uh, the process and all I want, because I, I learned from this process to him and on top of that, I'm exploring my skill set, right? So this is the purchase order, purchase order, uh, purchase location created, purchase order created. From here, you can track it. This is the supply chain orchestration and then go to orchestration plan also, you can see that, right? So it will take a couple of minutes and it will show you our purchase order details also here. It will be green colored. You see, both are completed. Next step is work order closer. Once you receive this purchase order, the work order closer complete will, work order closer will happen, right? So again, I, I told you that how to, if you have struck, for example, this got error, you will get error message here in detail error message. I forgot to show you that because I fixed my error message before fixing my mapping set. And once you fix that error, go to setups or mapping set accounts, wherever error you are getting, fix that error, keep the cursor here, and you go and resubmit. Then automatically the system will reprocess the error record. That's all, it's very simple process in the supply chain orchestration, okay? Now, so here is the process. Once you're done, I'll go here, I'll refresh. You see, I go to my job, I go to my web job, general information, Go to my operations. In the operations, I went to my supplier operation details. In the supplier operation details, you can see my purchase order came here. So once the purchase order created, it got PO requested, PO approved is one. The shop floor guy or the manufacturing engineer, manufacturing super production supervisor, they can tightly they can track it. What is my purchase order number? What is my shipping details? What is my receipt details? Where, where is the material? Everything you can able to track it in single place. You don't need to, you don't need to flow multiple forms like EBS, he has to go 
four or five or four or five modules he has to go and he has to validate the data here everything will be tracked in one form okay now again if he, the the software guy the production supervisor or the engineer if you want to see what is the po details you can just click the po number and it will take you into that purchase order details number it's like a view only file you can go and you can view the pdf file and you can see all the details from this purchase order itself also you can see what is my agreement number you can talk with the supplier hey this is my so uh, contract agreement which we already negotiated can you please complete this process quickly and ship it as soon as possible instead of the lead time is two days why you are delaying for the shipment right so all you can talk with that right so again the process is done now i am moving my material from uh, 10th operation to 20th operation because once i complete 10th operation my shop floor and then i need to send i need to ship confirm this uh, sub assembly or the assembly for the testing outside right so i'm going to show how to do that cancel it go to dispatch list review dispatch list review dispatch list is nothing but again the same as if you are use mes integration with your manufacturing in ebs in many mes will call it as a dispatch list. the same functionality we are also calling here i'll give my work order number here I'm sorry my work order number this is my work order number 1002 and i'll click search all search and I'll go down again uh, there are two way quick complete or complete with details if you go with complete with details it will show you that materials and it will show you the resource everything again this is the complete the manufacturing detail sessions and again here you can see if you have any push component or uh, manually if you want to apply the resource to the job and then you click this uh, radio button to you can apply you can issue the material to the job i mean the supply type is push or the resources are manuals and just quick complete you see you have completed the quantity one at the operation time for the work order the next operation 20 in the constant is the testing done now again i'm going in my work center search and uh, this is my 1002 is my work order click here go to operations you see it got completed you can see the completed now it's an in process now if it is an in process what do you want to do means i want to ship confirm this document to supplier third party i want i when i am doing the ship confirm I want to generate all my shipping documents like a bill of lading and packing slay and uh, any specification document, all document I'll attach along with my sub assembly or the assembly which the supplier need to test, I will send it to them. And the shipment is uh, trackable in cloud, but in EBS, we don't have that functionality. You see, everything will be in offline. We don't have any shipping functionality in cloud, I mean EBS. That's one of the gap in EBS side. But here in cloud, they have integrated that functionality. Now I'm going to ship confirm this uh, work order, right? So I'm taking this my work order number. Go to, I'll open another window. And go to my inventory, I'll do the ship confirm. So here, uh, supply chain execution, inventory management. So go to inventory. Uh, go to task also, task bar. Come on. Go to shipments and uh, manage shipment lines. And uh, give your order number. Order number is nothing but work order number. And uh, search. Like uh, add to shipment. No, not at a shipment. Auto create shipment. This is my shipment number. Click OK. Uh, save and close. Or you can do the ship confirm here. Or I can I can do it from here. You can see my line got staged. It means it went to staging. Staging. Again, same as a. Uh, uh, click the shipment number here. Six four one nine eight. Then you ship confirm. Ship confirm. Again, this is a, a ship confirm method. I mean, I didn't make this a mandatory field. This field has not enabled properly. 
I'll in, I will uh, select my shipping method. I'm sending you a DHL next day app ship confirm. Right. So the ship confirm was the shipment was confirmed. This is my shipment number six four one nine eight. Six four one nine eight. Right. So we need to make sure that uh, duplicate all the concurrent programs are triggered and uh, shipment advice everything is running i mean the interface trip stop in eps terminology go to tools go to schedule the process and make sure that everything is running right send shipment advice should be complete and all so that means that your interface trip stop run properly so it will take a time it will take a couple of minutes right so in meantime we'll go and see in the website okay so you know, you go here, open supplier operation details, and uh, you see the resource shipment details. But again, you can go and refresh. This is the one of the feature came here. You don't need to close the forms and open again, right? You can just click refresh. Six four one nine eight is my shipment. It's already shipped. This is the quantity one, right? This transaction date. Who put on the transaction, right? All the details came here, and again, I don't have any receiving details here. So okay. The supplier is done after two days. As for my lead time, the two days supplier took, he did all the testings or he did some casting for painting, uh, uh, assembly, he done it, and then he is he, he ship confirmed back to us. If the supplier has already the, I mean the I supplier portal is exist, he can create ASIN. We can do the ASIN receiving here again. That is another integrate one of the option. Another option if the supplier don't have any I supplier portal access and you want to send it offline. And you can give, you can send you the shipment number through email, or once you receive the shipment into our warehouse, then we found to receive it. Just done. Go back. Go back again into my <clears throat> inventory. I'll go and receive that uh, material. Go to shipment inventory. Uh, sorry, receiving receipts, and go to. Receipt expected receive expected shipments, and uh, here is the uh, drawback. The problem is the supplier don't have the work order number. I mean, the receiving doc over sitting, he can't able to perform based on the work order number. Again, still he has to go based on the item or the sub. I mean, the purchase order number or ASIN number. I can see that is a little bit of uh, gap in Oracle side because. I'm the receiving guy, I'm sitting in my dock. Maybe if you have a scanner is enabled, yes, you can scan it. And it, the, if you scan the label, all details will come into the system. But if not, then he has to search the PO number and he has to track the PO number, which is linked with the uh, work order number. And then he has to communicate to the shop floor guy, hey, you, you received, we received your sub assembly after testing or ca casting or the painting, you can go ahead and uh, complete the or the packaging, everything, right? That's how he has to communicate. But if he has a, based on the work order number, if any field is there in the receiving, it will be pretty easy where the receiving guy can do that. But anyway, again, when you're doing this ERP position for this OSP process, I'm sure I think the one of, maybe the business may ask this question. You have to convince them or we need to raise Oracle for something like innovation idea. Okay, all right. So let me go and do the receiving process based on my Purchase order number. I think this is my purchase order number. Uh, go to search. Hmm. Search. Right. So you see the organization is CV and this is my PO number and the due date and uh, click the receipt. So so receipt quantity okay right so you can see your work order number here right work order so once you click the create receipt it will go directly to my shop it will not go into my inventory the same this this functionality again in the same as a uh, EBS also. EBS also, it will show as a, a shop floor. The destination type as a shop floor, it will show in a EBS, but here it's showing a work order. Right? Click submit. 
So this my receipt number is nine zero two. I have given my starting number is nine nine thousand. Done. I'll go to my manufacturing here. I'll just uh, so. I'll click my one zero zero two, and then I'll go to operations. I'll go to here supplier operation details. Once you click the supplier operation details, your receipts say nine zero zero is delivered. So this is how the manufacturing guy can able to track his PO number, what is my receipt number, what is my shipment details. Everything you can able to track it from here. Once everything is done, you received, and then go back again here operations. You see it got completed. Once you receive this OSP operations in your system, automatically the transaction will be completed. Right? If, if the docking, I mean the receiving dock guy is received, right? And then the software guy can able to go and see, hey, this is my shipment number you received, right? Where you put it, in which place you kept that receiving material physically. So you can also, this is one, one way that the software can able to interact with the receiving dock guy and he can track his material where he kept in this, uh, so I'm in the shop floor, right? So once you're done, again, what you can do means you can go back again, the uh, review dispatch list, you will move to 20 to 30th operation, right? So let's click uh, search. And so this is my, 1002 is my job, click here and uh, quick complete. Done. So let me close this window. Done. Let me same close. And let me uh, close this. Done. Right. So let me go to see my work orders. Manage work orders. I just click open all order. I'm sorry. So just you have to select the closed or complete order cells here. I'll go for all. Select search. Once you click search, the 1002 is my complete. We'll go and see our inventory transactions, where, what are the transactions now we got hit here, right? So take this job number, go to inventory management, uh, inventory, something called like uh, inventory review completed transactions. This is nothing but the material transaction EBS terminology. So my organization is SUP. My item is this. I'm sorry, I don't want to go for item. I want to go something like a source type is a work order. And I want to go my reference field. Source reference is my work order number. I will give it here. Search source reference. Again, this is the same exist which is in EBS also. Right. This is my source document. Is my work order number. This is my work order number. Click search. You see, this are the materials. Comp one, comp two, comp three are my uh, components, raw materials which are issued to the sub assembly. I mean the assembly, and those are all issued. And this got completed and put it in my inventory. That's the positive quantity. And this is my transaction ID. Click the transaction ID. You can see the more details on it. Right. So very important what, what type of transaction types, actions, and everything you can see it from here. So this completes how the OSP process will work in the system. I mean, there's a uh, huge difference. I can say that uh, to compare EBS uh, in cloud, but the cloud is a tight integrated process. EBS, uh, there's a lot of gaps in EBS. I can say that because last implementation whenever, when I, when I perform with the business, there's a lot of questions. We can't able to even answer the questions because that many gaps are there in EBS, but cloud is amazing. So feel free, connect with me if you have any questions, if you need any help anytime. So based on my availability, I can help you. And these are my details, my mobile number, my email ID, everything is there. And if you want to go for detailed session, I mean the foundation, strong foundation, you can talk with Nana. And this is, this is this is the email ID of Nana and this is a mobile number. Okay. Thank you. Have a nice day.